To make peptides synthetically in our lab, we use the Prelude X peptide synthesizer. In this video, we will describe how to set up and run a synthesis. Start by opening the Prelude X program and logging in under the Tools tab. Once you are logged in, you will want to select the peptide sequence you want to make. Under the File tab, select Sequence from the Synthesis dropdown. A list of existing sequences will appear, as well as the option to create a new sequence and open or rename an existing sequence. In this case, we want to open the pre-existing Q11 sequence. This opens a window that has tabs for Program, Sequence, and Synthesis. In the Sequence tab, you can select a pre-existing sequence file and see the amino acids within the sequence, as well as the one letter or number designator for each amino acid. If you want to make a new sequence, refer to the corresponding video in the playlist. Take note of the amino acid file listed to the right of the sequence dropdown. The file the sequence is associated with needs to match the amino acid file under the Tool tab in Settings. If you need to change the amino acid file in Settings, you will need to close out of the program and reopen it. If the amino acid files do not match, your sequence will not appear when you load your synthesis. Once you are satisfied with the sequence, you can go to the Synthesis tab. In the top left corner of the window, you can select the synthesis file you want to use. In this example, we are using the Q11 synthesis file. One of the major benefits of using a peptide synthesizer instrument is the ability to make multiple peptides at once. In the drop-down tab on the left, you can select the sequence files you want to make. The sequence of amino acids will appear in the space to the right. Each amino acid will correspond to a letter or number that represents a step in synthesis listed under Program Sets at the top of the window. The step labeled 1 that corresponds to the C terminus of the sequence, for example, is labeled as Standard 3 mil Swell Capping Program. If you look under the Program tab of this window, you can look at each program set in detail. The Standard 3 mil Swell Capping Program step, for example, encapsulates the initial swelling of the resin, deprotection, coupling of the first amino acid, and capping of the unreacted amines. The letter D corresponds to the program, standard 3 mil, which is the coupling and deprotection of amino acids, so that it corresponds to all the amino acids between the C and N terminus. Lastly, the number 2 corresponds to the standard 3 mil end capping program, where the final amino acid is coupled, deprotected, and the N terminus is capped. If you want to change any of the programs, Simply select the drop-down arrow and pick the program you want to use. Note that we do not perform cleaving steps on the synthesizer. When your synthesis is complete, you will need to transfer your peptide to a new reaction vessel and cleave your peptide by hand. If you are running multiple sequences and they are different lengths, you will need to utilize idle cycles. By inputting an idle cycle into a sequence, you are telling the instrument not to perform the selected program on that specific reaction vessel. For this example, when a shorter peptide is undergoing the end capping step, you don't want the longer peptide to be capped. You would then input an idle cycle into the longer peptide sequence so that the capping reagents aren't directed into that vessel. You can input an idle cycle by selecting insert, then idle cycle. If this option is not available, make sure that you are logged in. Once you are satisfied with the sequence of program sets, make sure that the CONH2 option is selected. When you are done, you can either save your edits to the current synthesis file, or save the instructions as a new file. In this example, we are saving the sequences and program sets we selected to the synthesis file, so that now, when we open the synthesis file, this is the preset. Now, you can select the Load Synthesis tab in the main window. If your synthesis file does not immediately appear, select List All Synthesis. If your file still does not show up, Try logging in or out in the Tool tab, or changing the amino acid file under Settings. Once your file pulls up, select the Load button, which will take you to the RV Status tab. You'll notice the boxes listing your sequences are numbered. These numbers correspond to the different reaction vessels on the synthesizer itself. It is important that you note which sequence corresponds to each number and reaction vessel. Under the Calculation Solvent Reagent tab, you will want to change the sub-column to 0.30. You will need to hit enter or click away for this change to register. Your resin weight should now read 33.33 milligrams. This is the amount of resin you will need to weigh out in the reaction vessels. On this page, in the bottom left corner, you will see the reagents and solvents needed for the synthesis. These also correspond to a number that can be found on the lines leading to the reagent bottles.
In the center column of this table, the amount of each reagent used over the course of the entire synthesis is listed. To the right of that column, the recommended amount of reagent is listed. These recommended amounts should be considered carefully, however. Most of our reagents keep for a long time, but some expire quickly. For example, the DMF solvent we keep in bulk because so much of this solvent is used during synthesis, and DMF keeps for a long time. Therefore, there is no harm in topping off this reagent. The acetic anhydride period in capping solution, however, degrades within 24 hours. If that solution sits in the bottle long enough, it will evaporate into the lines and can clog the synthesizer. Since this reagent is a single synthesis use, we want to conserve our chemicals. While the instrument recommends that we have 100 mL of this solution in our reagent bottle, the synthesis needs only 22 mL. Therefore, it saves more reagents if we prepare 50 mL of the reagent instead of 100. Inspect each reagent bottle and determine which needs to be filled. Take note of how much reagent you need to make. Remember, do not fill reagent bottle 8. You will never cleave on the synthesizer. On the Calculation Amino Acid tab, the amino acids used in your sequence will have a suggested volume and weight where the volume is the amount of DMF and the weight is the amount of FMOC protected amino acid to be added to the amino acid bottle. Take note of these amounts for each amino acid. Remove the reagent bottles that you need to refill. Bottle number four, the capping solution, should have a wash bottle in place and the reagent bottle should be empty and set aside. Remove the amino acid bottles you need to fill by pressing on the metal tab until the bottle releases. You'll notice as you fill the reagent bottles that the instructions to make the most commonly used amounts are written on the bottle label. When preparing the amino acids, make sure that the amino acids are completely dissolved in DMF. Vortexing the solution for several seconds can help. To prepare your reaction vessel, weigh out the noted amount of resin directly into the vessel. On the synthesizer, lift the lever and guide the wash vessel up with the top seal. Remove the wash vessel and seal your reaction vessel before lowering it into the slot at the bottom. Removing the vessel from the top first can cause damage to the top sensor. Attach the filled reagent bottles to their respective lines and push the amino acid bottles back into place by pushing from the bottom until you hear and feel a click. Before you pressurize the bottles, check the regulator on the nitrogen tank. The right gauge shows how much pressure there is inside the tank. The left gauge shows how much pressure there is leaving the tank. The left gauge should be set to 88 psi. If both gauges are at zero, this can mean that the tank is closed and there is no nitrogen leaving the tank. The tank can be opened by turning the main cylinder valve on the top of the tank. If the gauges remain at zero, even after the tank is open, then the tank is empty and needs to be replaced. If you need to adjust the output PSI to 88 PSI, once the tank is opened, use the adjustment knob. Under the Operations tab, open the bottle preparation window. Select all of the reagent bottles and amino acid bottles that you will need to use and prime these bottles. During the pressurization step, check for any leaks around all connection points between the regulator, hose, and tank by using diluted soap and water. If you see any bubbles form, you will need to tighten the joints or remove and reattach the regulator completely. Once all the bottles are pressurized and primed, return to the RV status page and click start. If there are no errors, the window on the left will change from ready to cycle one. 
Whenever your synthesis is complete between five and six hours, the window will show that the final step and the final cycle are complete. Remove your reaction vessel and replace it with the wash vessel using the same technique you used previously. Under the Operations tab, under Cleaning, select Wash RVs. This runs DCN through the RV lines to flush out any residual reagents. Once that is complete, under Bottle Preparations, select all the amino acids and reagent bottles you used and run a nitrogen back flush. This runs nitrogen through the lines and flushes any remaining reagents back into the bottles. Next, vent your amino acids before removing them and replacing them with wash bottles. If there is any remaining amino acid solution, parafilm the bottle and store it in the fridge. Vent the capping reagent bottle and replace it with a wash bottle. Discard of the remaining capping solution and rinse the bottle with water. Allow the bottle to dry with the lid off. Lastly, turn off the nitrogen tank's main valve. Congratulations on successfully completing a synthesis on the Prelude X synthesizer.